Right now, we're going to look at the new sky replacement in Photoshop 2021 in depth. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And today we're going to look at the new sky replacement inside of Photoshop 2021. Now, I did a video previously. If you haven't watched it yet, check it out where I go through the top new features inside of Photoshop. And now we're going to focus on looking at some of these key features in depth. And we're going to start right now with the sky replacement. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how it works and then we're going to dig deeper and you'll learn how to create your own skies and all kinds of things. So here's a photo that I shot with my Mavic Pro and I think it looks pretty good, except the sky is just kind of boring. Let's fix that right now. So what we're going to do is choose the edit, go down to sky replacement and you get the sky replacement dialog box pops up. Let me just push it up to the corner. And you can see immediately it replaces the sky. I don't think that's a very good choice. Let's have a look and see what other skies are available. Click the little arrow. And if you don't see any skies in there and it's blank, click this little gear and choose to append default skies. And that will load the skies that come with Photoshop. In a little bit, I'll show you how to create your own skies. All right, so here we are with these skies. We're going to go down. We don't want the blue skies. We're looking for something, obviously, sunset-ish and we've got these ones called spectacular well let's have a look and see how they look let's try this one. Ooh, that looks good and we could also try this one i think this looks even better because the angle just seems to work quite nicely okay so i'm just going to just click to apply that and we're going to move down here and let's look at some of the options that we have available the first one is the output to new layers or duplicate the layer we're going to output this to new layers all right so let's look here we can play around with the sky notice how it just kind of blends into the uh, background there we've got two options one of them is the fade the edge if you don't fade the edge see how it just kind of is a little bit harsher and we watch the shift edge let's just turn these all the way down here and notice this if I turn it all the way up it kind of goes down further if I pull it to the left it just kind of pulls it up. So I want to shift it quite high. So this allows a little bit of the original background to kind of show through, which is what I want because I've got Catalina Island and some things. And now we can fade it. Notice if we increase it all the way there, it'll fade with the original. And here it shows just the new sky. So what you want to do is just fade it just a little bit. So on the horizon, it starts to fade up a little bit and it just looks a little bit more natural because you have a little bit of atmosphere on the horizon. You'll see haze, fog, things like that. All right. The second option we have is for the foreground. Do we want to blend the foreground in? And so we can kind of play around with that. Let's have a look at the foreground adjustments. All right. So we can play with the lighting adjustments and this is going to be kind of where it's meeting on the horizon. So if we want to, you know, make it a little bit brighter, just take it to the left. If we want to make it a little darker, pull it to the right. Let's find a nice mix in there. I think about here is a nice match. And then, of course, color. So right now we've got a different kind of a color here. It's a little bit more color than what we had in the original shot. So let's adjust the color. And notice as we do this, it's affecting the color. Look on the water here, because if we take that color all the way here, that's not matching at all. So let's push it up and get a little bit aggressive with it. Now we're starting to get a little bit more of that color from the sky coming in here. It's starting to get a little bit more believable. Now we can always do adjustments later and we'll look at that. Now the next thing we want to do is let's look at the sky adjustments. So we've done the edge, we've done the foreground, and let's look at the sky now. So we can adjust the temperature. If we want to make it warmer, we move that up and that gives us more of that orange. You want to make it cooler, move it to the left. I'm going to push it more to the right. We want that nice, warm sunset looking beautiful. And now let's just adjust the brightness. And we're just looking for a brightness level. Here's the darkest and here's the brightest. So we're looking for something that's going to kind of match what we're working with. I'm thinking about here is looking kind of nice. Now I might brighten the overall image, but I just want to blend it right now. I'm not worried about the overall look as much as I am just making sure that we've got a good blend. And now we're going to click OK to apply it. 
Now let's see what we get. When we work with the sky replacement, it creates a group. So here's the original and here's the group. So if we want to look at it, when we change the sky brightness, it creates an adjustment layer. And we can see here, we've got that adjustment layer and let me double click and I'll show you what we've got. We've got a brightness contrast adjustment for the sky brightness. Let me just turn that off. Double click on here and we can see we've got a color adjustment. We've got a color balance adjustment here for the sky color. So we could adjust those independently. So right now we're just looking at the sky and let me hide the foreground. We're going to go all the way down. So we're just looking at each individual piece. So right now here's the sky and there's the mask it creates. If I hit the out of the option key, I can click on that mask and you can see that. So you could paint in this mask if you wanted. Um, and let's have a look at the next one. We get the foreground here. See that's what it's doing. It gives a little kind of a fog kind of an effect. So those two layers, so without it and with it and see what it's doing. It's giving us that kind of haze on the horizon. And then we've got the foreground color here. So this is the color that's going over our image. Let's turn on all the layers and look at how we would adjust them. So let me double click the foreground color and notice what you get here is you're getting a curve. If you go to the red, you could see that, see? And it looks like the greens are being reduced and the blues are being reduced. In fact, the reds haven't really been adjusted. Great. Okay, so let's have a look. If we want to enhance this effect, if we look at it, we can see it's opacity 89%. We can increase that opacity if you want to make that effect stronger. If you want to reduce it, we can do it here. So see how we've got complete control in here even after we've applied it because all it's doing is applying these adjustment layers. So the sky brightness, if you wanted to make it darker, you could just go in here and just make it a little darker. You could mask it in different areas if you wanted. Same thing here with the color. If you wanted to make that color more yellow, you can see that. So we can go in and we can adjust these beyond what we get inside the dialog box because we have these adjustments. So what I might do on this image just to make it look good is just give it an overall curves adjustment at the very top and adjust everything together. So let's go into the adjustment layers here and we're going to create a curves. And with the curve, I'm just going to go just a little bit into the midtone brights and we're just going to push it up just to brighten it a little bit. And there we go. I think we've got a pretty good result there. And if we consider what it was before and after, this is where we started. And there we are after. All right, let's go a little bit deeper into this now. So this next one, we're just going to kind of look at the creative process in working with this and creating our own skies. Obviously, it's a more difficult horizon here or you know, skyline. This is a panorama that I shot, by the way, multi-image panorama. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some of our own skies. Now, one of the things I have shot a lot of is skies. So I've got a lot of skies and clouds here that I've shot different types, moody, some more, you know, creative or whimsical. We've got these ones. I've got lots and lots of skies that I've created. And I've got a question for you guys. Would you be interested in a sky pack? So if I was to, you know, spend a bit of time and go through, find my very best skies and create a sky pack that would be a premium product, would that be something you guys are even interested in? Uh, let me know in the comments. All right, so moving on, I think we're going to use this shot here as our sky in the city. So all I want to do is I'm just going to choose File, Export, I'm going to save for web, and I'm going to save this as a JPEG. I'm going to save it at the full size, and I'm going to click Save, and let's save it as Sunset Clouds. I've already saved one, but I'm just going to replace it so you can see the full process. All right, so I've got a JPEG file sitting on my hard drive. Let's go back to our image that we're going to work on. All right, so let's go up and we're going to choose our Edit. Let's go down to sky replacement. All right, so it's, right now it's going to replace it. And you know what? That looks pretty good. In fact, that looks really good. But what I want to do is I'm going to show you the sky that we're going to work with. So let's click on the sky here. We can go down, click the plus button. Let me do that again so I don't go too fast for you. Click the little arrow that opens up the sky library. At the bottom, you see that plus. Click on the plus. And now we can navigate to the different skies that I've saved. And let's just click OK. It's going to load it up. 
sunset clouds, click OK. All right, and so there's our sky here, and you can see how it looks in there. Well, let's play around with some of the settings. Let's warm up the color temperature. Play around with the brightness. Brighten it up a little bit here. And notice too, you can scale it. So you can make it smaller or you can make it larger. Let's make that a little bit larger. And here's our lighting. By the way, you can change the lighting mode to multiply or screen. Screen will brighten up your image. Multiply will darken your image. Let's do that right now. Great. And click OK. And you can see now that we've applied our own sky. Now, if you feel like these edges are a little bit fuzzy, we can go in and we can mask these. So what we're going to do is choose the layer here with the city on it. And then we're going to grab our object selection tool. And let's make a selection around these buildings. So now it's selected these buildings for me. I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option key and I just want to take these areas away. So with the Alt or Option, I'm going in here and I'm just kind of digging in a little bit deeper. Great. So what this is doing is it's creating a mask for us around the entire city. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this to help me paint on the mask. So if we choose the layer here or the mask that belongs to the sky, right now the city is being selected. All right, so if you want to remove it from the city, what we're doing is we're selecting the sky there on the layer mask. And then what we want to do is we want to paint with black. Make sure we've got our opacity and flow set to 100. And what I'm doing is I'm just painting on those edges just to make sure nothing's gone over. It doesn't really look like much has. So it's actually pretty easy. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to inverse the selection. So we're going to choose Select, Inverse. So now we're painted outside, we can paint outside of the building. So with our mask selected, we now want white. Let's hit the X key. So if I go with here and I paint around there, notice what's happening is it's getting rid of that halo around the buildings. However, I don't mind it near the horizon. I just want to get rid of it near the tops of the buildings because towards the horizons there, you would see some of that. So see what we're doing? We're just kind of making it a little bit more natural. And just kind of painting in those areas there control d and you can see we start to get a better blend there now of course we can go in and we can adjust the color in any of these let me double click on them we've got the brightness contrast and we've got the color balance let's play around a little bit with this color balance i make it there a little less green that's what i'm looking for Okay, so we can start to make some changes with the color balance, but if that's not what you're wanting, we can turn that off and we can do our own adjustments. So what happens if we wanted to say, go under here and we're gonna apply something different. Let's apply a look, a color lookup table or a LUT. So we've clicked on there. Now let's choose to load a LUT. And what if we want something like, I don't know, late sunset, boom, you know, a little much, but we can dial back the opacity and you can see how we can go in there now and start to take over all of our images. Now, if I wanted to apply this a lot to the entire image and not just the sky, drag it up above the group. And obviously it's still a little too strong. Let's take it back and we just give it just a little touch there and you can see how it's starting to affect it. Now, the last thing I want to do is take it into camera raw and make an adjustment over the whole image. All right, so why don't we just select all the layers? So just click at the top, hold the shift key, click on the bottom, selects all the layers, right click. And now we're going to go to, so now we're going to convert to a smart object. Now everything's wrapped up into a smart object. Let's go into camera raw and adjust it all together. So we're going to choose filter camera raw filter. And this is just going to really bring it together because now the sky and the foreground are treated as one element and any adjustments we make are going to affect the whole image. So let's just, Increase the color temperature a little bit. Oh man, that looks nice. This would cover those highlights a little, open up those shadows, give a little white, little black to give it just a little bit of body, little hit of texture, touch of clarity there. 
uh, and then maybe even get a little bit of vibrance and reduce the saturation slightly. And look at that. See what we're starting to do with that image? We can really just make that pop and come alive. And click OK. And you can see, you know, what we have there. All right, guys. So there we go. That's looking a little bit deeper into the new sky replacement inside of Photoshop 2021. Let me know in the comments underneath uh, what other features you'd like to see me dig a little bit deeper into. And also don't forget to check out my other videos that I've done this week. I did one on my top features on Photoshop 2021. Check that out to get a quick overview of all the new features. And I also did one on Lightroom Classic 10. You'll find those at photoshopcafe.com or at Photoshop Cafe on YouTube. And by the way, guys, if you're new here, welcome to the Cafe crew. Consider hitting that subscribe button and you'll get a new video from me every single week. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.